In my 20s, I made a transformation by losing over 70 pounds. I've spent the last 10 years helping men and women like you find the most sustainable solutions to fat loss. Over the last 20 years, I've made every mistake possible so you don't have to. And today I'm gonna to share with you eight things I wish I knew sooner about losing fat. Number one, protein is your ally. You wanna make sure you're actually losing fat and not muscle, and that's where protein comes in. Without even having to live in the gym, a high protein diet helps you build more muscle and maintain a lower body fat percentage compared to someone who's skimping out on protein. The internet is full of wild recommendations, but what consistently shows up in the research is around 0.7 grams of protein per pound of your body weight is sufficient. And if you've got a lot of weight to lose, you can do 0.7 times a pound of your goal body weight. Let's say you're 230 pounds and want to weigh 180 pounds, you could work out a range. So 0.7 times 180, that gives you around 126 grams. And then 0.7 times 230, that gives you 161 grams. So you can aim for anywhere between that range. And just so you don't rack up the calories, I recommend sticking to lean sources of protein, 0% fat Greek yogurt, low fat dairy, chicken breasts over chicken thighs, lean cuts of meat where possible, so 97 or 95% fat-free minced beef or minced meat, whatever you have, instead of having the higher fat, like 10%, 20% fat versions. This will save you a lot of calories and also help you hit your protein target without going over on your calories. And I suggest spreading this protein intake roughly over two to four meals throughout the day. Number two, you can actually eat more food if you choose the right food. Your goal is not to eat the least amount of food, it's to eat the most amount of food for the least amount of calories. So I was introduced to the athlete's plate while studying for my master's in performance nutrition. I feel this visual is very useful. You wanna organize your plate similar to this. 40% of your plate will be non-starchy vegetables or fruit. 25% will be a starchy carbohydrate, 25% protein, and 10% a fat source. If you were to eat three meals similar to this, you wouldn't need to track and you would lose weight. High fiber foods like fruits and vegetables are gonna keep you more full and more satisfied and prevent you from overeating. So they're gonna actually take up more room in your stomach for less calories. And making some smart swaps with your carbohydrates, like switching potatoes, so having potatoes instead of bread, having potatoes instead of rice, they can be normal potatoes, sweet potatoes, those little swaps are gonna go a, a long way in terms of your satiety. Number three is not forgetting to fuel your workouts. As you cut calories, you lose fat, your energy levels may dip. And this is where you gotta avoid cutting things like carbs. Of course, you can do it without carbs, but what I suggest instead is timing your carbs. Personally, if I was to cut carbs, my performance dips. When clients cut carbs too much, their performance dips too. So you want to make sure you have carb available in the body for these workouts. That doesn't mean you have to have like a high carb meal right before your workout like some people recommend, but it does mean a few things. So firstly, I recommend if you're training in the morning, make sure you've had a high carb dinner. These carbs from the dinner will store in your body and be used for fuel in your morning workouts. So you don't have to like rush to have like a high carb meal before your morning workouts. I know that's not always feasible. And then you can just get away with either a shake, like a protein shake with water before your session, like 30 to 45 minutes or nothing at all. Or if you feel like you need a bit more then a protein shake and a piece of fruit, like 30 to 45 minutes before you actually train. Let's say you don't train in the morning. Let's say you train later in the day. I suggest having a high carb meal, actually your highest carb meal, around 50 to 60% of your total carbs, like two to three hours before you train. That should be sufficient to actually be able to use those carbs and to actually be able to digest them. Personally for fat loss phases, I stick to a lower fat, higher carb, higher protein approach, but don't drop your fats lower than 20% of your total calories as this can have some health implications, especially on your hormones. Number four, you wanna embrace the diet break. I've played around with diet breaks and refeeds for as long as I can remember. Basically what a diet break is, it's a period, I would say most commonly one to two weeks where you adjust your calories, you eat more food, so you bring it to maintenance calories, you exit that deficit, you go to maintenance calories, 
and you just spend some time there. This can help reduce diet fatigue, it can help you stay in the game, keep you motivated, and it's especially useful if you have like a holiday coming up or you have a week where workload is gonna be pushed right through the roof or you just don't feel like dieting. So what you might do is, say you've got 50 pounds to lose, instead of just doing it like in one block of six months, maybe you'll break it up. So you'll do three months, you'll take one to two weeks off, like at maintenance, then you'll do three months again, and then you'll maybe go to maintenance again. But that's just one way you can do it. There are other ways. You could do every two months. It depends on what you prefer and what you feel will be easier for you to manage mentally and physically. Number five, it's likely gonna take longer than you think, and that's completely fine. You just have to know this from the get-go. If you're prepared to understand that you might have underestimated the time, that's gonna be a lot better than if you actually get there and you're like, ah, it's taking so long. So most people think they have 10 to 15 pounds to lose and they'll see their abs. And unfortunately, that is an underestimation. But like I said, if you notice up front, it makes a world of difference. Just understand that life will crop up. There'll be work events, there'll be holidays, there'll be weddings, there'll be family gatherings. And those are all gonna slow down your process but that's fine, that's life. Focus on progress and the process, and that is the most cliche thing I've said in 2024, but it leads nicely into the next point. Done good often over perfection rarely. So let's say you have a goal, your target is 2000 calories a day. You won't know if your plan's working or not unless you actually follow that unless you're consistent with achieving an average of 2,000 calories a day. And if you're doing that for, let's say, two to three weeks, then you'll know if your plan's working or not, whether you need to make pivots, what you need to do, because if it's not working, that's probably the time frame it will show up. And then if you fall off a few times within those two to three weeks, don't try and overcompensate. Just get straight back on and aim for around 80% consistency. An underrated tool is actually standardizing. So having a similar routine daily and eating similar foods, this is going to reduce decision fatigue and make you more likely to stick to your plan. You can even eat more or less the same times every day. This is going to make hunger more predictable and make you less hungry between meals, so long as you're eating enough food and the right foods. And another added bonus of eating at a similar time, like every day, it means that if you're weighing yourself daily, your fluctuations are gonna be less extreme and less present, in fact. Number seven, adjust as you go. As you lose weight, your body will adapt and it will slow down to conserve energy. This means you'll burn fewer calories as you move less and your body just generally has less weight to carry around. So you'll need less calories to actually do it. Let's say you see two to three weeks without progress and you're following everything I went over in my last video. Then what you can do is you can cut calories by 10% and also increase your step count. So let's say you're eating 2000 calories, you move to 1800 calories a day. And then let's say your step count is 10,000, then you increase it to 12,000. So new step count, you're moving more and you're eating less calories. This should break through the plateau. Number eight is sleep. I'm not going to be so drastic here and say that if you don't sleep, you're not going to get results, but Good sleep is needed in order to recover properly, in order to have the energy to actually work out and also support muscle growth. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you my sleep is perfect, but it's pretty good. I sleep around seven hours most nights. And if I wanna sleep seven hours, I know I have to be in bed for seven and a half hours. So if you wanted to sleep for eight hours, you'd probably have to be in bed for eight and a half hours, just as a rule of thumb to allow for time to fall asleep. And some underrated sleep strategies I use are making sure dinner contains carbs, first of all, stop eating two to three hours before I sleep. I cool my room, I use a fan or open the windows. I have a comfortable memory foam pillow and mattress as well. And a sleep mask. Then if you want to throw on some extras, some blackout blinds or curtains will also be beneficial. You want your room to be cool, dark. That's all for this video. I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts if you've made any of these mistakes in the past and if you've corrected them and what's kind of happened. But those are my top eight. I do probably have other things, but these are the most important things I would say when it comes to fat loss. Anyway, 
I've dropped a link to my free fat loss course where you can lose three pounds in the next five days. That's three pounds of fat for free. So it's in the description below. Uh, you can click on it, enter your email and sign up for that. And if you've got any questions at all, comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to be alerted as soon as I post a video. Have the best day ever and we'll talk soon.